Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Magically Cruising, the cruise podcast where we share our personal experience and tips with you to make the most out of your next cruise. My name is Kieran, I'm an independent travel agent specializing in all things cruise, Disney and North America and I'm joined by my fellow co-hosts Sarah and Donna. Do you guys want to say hello? I'm Donna and I work over at Cruising for Cruise with Kids with the lovely Sarah and I also write over at lightlovedo.com and I'm Sarah and work with Donna on Cruising for All, Cruising with Kids and Extraordinary Chaos, which is more craft, food, with a bit of travel. Brilliant. Thank you for that, guys. And today we're going to talk about one of my favourite cruise lines and the one that started it all for me as well, which is Disney Cruise Line. Um, I sailed for my honeymoon with Disney Cruise Line and it was the one that kind of set me off of my passion of cruising. Um, so today we thought we'd not necessarily talk about a particular ship or sailing just because I've sailed on two different classes of ships with Disney. But we just thought we'd talk about what makes Disney so different to other cruise lines as well. And just giving you guys a bit of an overview of what make what it is to sail, I guess, with Disney and why you should maybe consider it for your next cruise holiday. Um, but Sarah, as a lady with the facts, do you want to give the guys at home just a little bit of an overview of the different ships that Disney offer? Okay, so Disney have five ships in service and three under construction. So we'll start with the oldest ships, which is Disney Magic and Disney Wonder. They hold 2,713 guests and a crew of 945. Then you've got the Disney Dream and Disney Fantasy. So they're slightly bigger with 4,000 guests and a crew of 1,458 passengers. And then you've got the newest ships, which is currently Disney Wish, Disney Treasure coming and Ship 7 after that. And they've got a maximum occupancy of 5,500 guests with 1,555 crew. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I think it's good as well to point out the different sizes of ships. So the first two ships are really small, which does offer them the chance to kind of go into some really unique places as well and sail into some of the ports that the larger ships can't go into. Uh, But they do keep that timeless look as well, which I think is what I love so much about them. Uh, If you're somebody who really loves those timeless classical ships, Disney definitely offer that with their classic two funnel stacks on board. They also have a promenade deck on the original four ships as well. So a full wrapper on promenade deck for that kind of, you know, classic timeless cruise experience. But they're also very contemporary as well in in regards to kind of the entertainment, the technology on board. The decor inside is very timeless, but very contemporary as well. So they're a really good resort line as well and perfect for the whole family. Uh, We've sailed them as an advert only couple and we had an absolutely amazing time. But I think it's worth stressing out that obviously Disney are you know, synonymous, if I can even say that word, with families. um, And it's why a lot of families do love sailing with them. So the first question, I suppose, would be, because I've not sailed with Disney, um, and I think when the boys were younger, it was very much we wanted to, but they never did. And now they're older. I don't know. I think after the vacations, I I think my view of Disney is just very much it's geared for younger kids. So what do you think? I mean, with a, a family with young adults, children... Would you recommend Disney? 100%. 100%. Like, we obviously, we sold as a, as a, as a same sex couple, adult only for our honeymoon, and we got spoiled rotten. So, just to start off on how they treat adults, they're aware of who are pay, who's paying the bill, adults, at the end of the day. Um, so, there's tons of space. So, there's kind of adult only areas where the kids can't go into, and they've got kind of loads of cocktails and drinks, and they've got loads of quiet pools, and they've got hot tubs for adult only. So, there's definitely little sanctuaries to get away from the kids if you wanted to on board. But just from a family perspective of what they offer for the kids, obviously you're going to have all the classic Disney characters walking around the ship and meeting and greeting people. So that in itself is just an amazing reason to sail with them. And you get to have kind of more intimate time with the characters than you would in the theme parks because obviously you've got more time with them and the ship is a little bit more intimate than dealing with kind of the big lines of the theme park. So that in itself is a great one. They do things like um, a princess tea party. Um, So this is an extra charge, but you can kind of go into one of the dining rooms. You can have a tea party with the princesses as well. Um, so there's just really cool chances to kind of get more uh, interaction with the characters than you would get on kind of the theme parks. But then also kids clubs as well. Like the kids clubs are incredible. There's an entire deck dedicated just to the kids clubs and they're given kind of prominent space. So they're not kind of hidden away in random places in the basements. They're kind of, you know, in the prominent part of the deck as well. The kids have free reign to kind of run around those kids clubs as they want. Then obviously you've got splash pools on board. You've got slides on board. They have the it was the first ever aqua coaster on board, the aqua duck as well on the dream and the fantasy as well. 
So there's loads of stuff for the kids to do as well. But equally, Disney makes sure they look after the adults as well and make sure the adults have a really great time when they're sailing. Kieran, can you tell us a bit about how the dining works on Disney cruise ships? Because they do things quite differently, don't they? They do, yeah. They have the traditional first seat and second seat in, and they're, they're very rigid about that because it fits in around the entertainment they have on board as well. So they're quite rigid in that regard. So you do have to pick whether you want first or second seat in. But what's unique about Disney is they have what they call rotational dining, um, which sounds bonkers but it's actually really simple ultimately when you get on board your key card your room to the key, uh, your key to the world card will have um, acronyms on it for each of the dining rooms and you rotate through the different dining rooms each night um so um for example on the magic when we were on board you have like animators palette um on the first night for example and that is going to be um it's all black and white when you first walk into it and then as the kind of evening and the meal progresses then all the room changes color the lighting changes but also when you sit down, you've got a placemat. And on the placemat, you've got to draw yourself in like cartoon character style. Oops. And then they take the placemats away. And then as you're dining, all of a sudden, all the lighting goes down. And then this whole um, like special effects video show happens around the room where your character you've drawn on your placemat is in the animated film. But it's all classical sequences from the Disney films as well. <laughs> so you kind of see yourself in the Jungle Book. You see yourself in The Lion King. And you're dancing with like Blue and things like that. Um, and then Mickey comes out at the end as well. Um, and then they give you your certified Disney animator pat mat back, basically, with a little seal of approval on this saying you're a certified Disney animator and because you've drawn your character and it appears in the Disney film. Oh, and then uh -oh. dessert comes out. It's like just little magical things like that that makes their dinner shows a little yeah. bit different as well. Like dinner's a lot more immersive. And then a the second night, then you could be in, say, I think it's Lumiere's, um, which is um, themed to Beauty and the Beast. So it's like more regal, it's more royal. Um, all the little details, things like um, the bread basket in one of the restaurants is like a Cinderella coach as well. Um, so they've all got like loads of little details throughout them as well. Um, so the way it works ultimately then, yeah, is you obviously dine in that first restaurant of the first night and the second night you'll go to the next restaurant. The third night you'll go into the third restaurant and then you'll go back and you'll keep rotating through the restaurants throughout the night. But what's really unique is the wait staff will follow you around as well. So you'll have the same wait staff and the same wait team for the whole duration of your sailing. But they're really good at getting to know kind of what you like, what you don't like, the pace you like to dine at as well. Any dietary requirements are nailed there and then on the first day type of things, so they get to know you. Um, Phil's gluten-free, and I think we've talked about this in the past, but they were so adamant to impress Phil. <laughs> like It became their, their challenge of the day to make sure that Phil was happy and satisfied with his uh, dessert options was the main one. Gluten-free desserts are really tricky. So they kept saying like, okay, I've spoken to Chef. We've got a new dessert for you tomorrow. We promise we're going to give you something new tomorrow. And every day they were really <laughs> trying to kind of go above and beyond and impress him. And it's just lovely because like the, the drink staff get to know how much you like to drink your wine and things like that. So they're either topping you up or slowing down. They get to know you and learn more about you. And it's just a really lovely way to go to a new restaurant and have a new menu, but still have the same wait staff looking after you each day, which goes into this whole Disney customer service level. It's just really lovely small touches like that. What about snacks? Loads of options for snacks, loads. So you've got obviously the main buffet as well, um, cabanas on the four original ships, which is the massive um, buffet at the back of the ship, again, available pretty much most of the day, breakfast, dinner, and even it's the evenings. There are a couple of hours you close is, um, kind of cleaning and turnaround service, but loads of food there. Then you've also got around the pool area as well. So again, each ship, they call them different things, but you tend to have like a pizzeria, burger and hot dogs, ice cream parlor, where you can help yourself to as much ice cream as you want. Um, another thing as well, soft drinks are included in all Disney fairs as well. So you can have as much um, soft drinks as you want. You just serve yourself from the service stations. They've got obviously in the buffet, but there's also one on the pool deck as well. So you can just go up to the pool deck and self-serve and help yourself to soft drinks as much as you want. Um, throughout the ship then as well, the coffee shops, there's a coffee shop in the adult only area called um, Cafe Cove, which again, you can have like little pastries and cakes, things like that. That's as much as you want. Then in the adult district in the evenings as well, they put out like a hot buffet as well. So you can just help yourself to a buffet in the adult area at night time. Room service is included as well. So you can have as much room service as you want for free. Just keep ordering and, and trust me, they made, made the most of that room service in the evenings as well. Uh, there's this abundance of food. We did jokingly say like, I can't wait to get off the ship to feel hungry again because we just ate nonstop <laughs> for seven days. So Disney do have um, specialty dining on board. Depending on the ship you're on is whether there's one, two or more. Um, just because the Wish and the newer ships have more again than they did on the original four ships. Um, but ultimately, you're going to have two adult-only specialty dining. So again, if you want to kind of go in and have a nice couples-only meal, you can totally do that. We did it for my 30th birthday. Um, so the two that I've been on, at least anyway, you've got Remy's and Paolo's as well. So they're the kind of two speciality. There is a surcharge for it. 
can't remember what it is now, but Paolo's was around about $25 when I was on board last. I think it's gone up now to about $30, $40. It's all Italian themed as well, so you kind of get a really good meal from there. But they also do brunch as well, so that's a really top tip as well. Brunch is incredibly popular. You've literally got to fight to get your reservations the day. Reservations come out, but they do brunch in both Paolo's and Remy's. Remy's tends to be a little bit more um, fine dining, so that's on the Dream and the Fantasy specifically from those four original ships, at least anyway. That's around about the $60, $70 territory from my memory as well to kind of pay to go into that. But again, that is your proper Michelin star fine dining. So they have kids clubs right up to the age of 17. Um, they've got the Disney Oceaneers Club, which is children aged 3 to 12. Um, I'm pretty sure they do separate them up a little bit, but they, they're mainly joined together in different themed magical lands. And they have the Disney um, Oceaneers Lab which is more imaginative themed activities and games for the three to 12 year olds as well. Then they have two clubs for the tweens and teens. They have the edge and the vibe where they can watch movies, play games, arts and crafts. Um, and there's a chill out space. They can watch TV, there's group games, and obviously they've all got planners. So you know what's going on throughout the day as well. When we were on Encore, uh, we could see into the chill out area for the teens from, from the back of the ship. Cause we were, oh yeah. And yeah. oh my god, it looks amazing! It yeah. looks incredible. It was like the outside. Oh. So the whole is it the, the the whole is it the whole the front bit? Um, yeah. And it was just it was all big comfy sofas and oh, it looked amazing. They do. They definitely give the kids a lot of space. Like this, this is in the small corner of one part of the ship. Like I say, there's an entire deck on the dream and the fantasy. At least anyway, that is just kids clubs. And then, as you say, then on the the nose, the for the forward bit of the ship as well, there's an entire kids club area in there as well, where they've got their own hot tub. Um, they do some great activities. Like I, I sit with envy looking through the schedule whenever I'm on the board. So they make flubber. They have flubber making classes. This was before slang was as big as it is now no, as well. No. But they used to do flubber making classes. They so you think you can cook is another one they do. So they do like um, cooking classes where you can make your own food, pizzas and things like that in the kids clubs. Obviously, then you've got the characters that come out as well. So Tinkerbell comes out and does like storytelling with Tink Tinkerbell and things like that. There's just so many activities from kind of literally the sunrise to sunset. There's just activities nonstop. Do they still do the adult time? Because I'm sure I read somewhere that they do because they've got the Millennium Falcon, haven't they? The Marvel. Uh -huh. I mean, I will just weep <laughs> and Andy's room. <laughs> So do they still do the adult time? They do. Um, you've got open hours, basically, in the schedule that they're called. So you've got open hours. Obviously, this is designed for you as an adult or a parent even to kind of go in and get to know the youth activity coordinators, just to obviously do that, kind of get to know them. But it's the perfect chance as well, if you have got kids, to go in and have a little look around, to so have a little play about yourself. Because obviously then, well, when they're open in the regular hours, they're completely safe spaces then for the kids to be looked mm, after so people yeah. can't just randomly walk into them. But there are definitely open hours when we did our transatlantic because we were sailing with like i don't know it was less than 200 kids they opened up those hours more frequently so more in the evenings <laughs> so like you know 10 11 o'clock oh. at night they opened up the kids clubs to the adults type of thing so i went in there one time and we would we met spider-man and we made a superhero mask <laughs> like literally drunk at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> yeah the different types of rooms that we've just been talking about you can actually go into andy's room which is a, a life-size recreation of andy's room you can hang out with Ham and Rex. Oh my God, how amazing is that? <laughs> then you've got the Disney Infinity Game Room, which has got Disney racers and you can try out an Infinity Draw. Then you've got the Pixie Hollow, which is a whimsical fairyland world with Tinkerbell and you can dress up and you can do craft projects as well. Then you've got the Star Wars Millennium Falcon. Oh my God, that just sounds amazing. And, learning, and you can take part in Jedi training over Han Solo's cockpit and you can spin into the galaxy then you've got Disney Junior, which is where the Disney Junior buddies hang out and they show up on the big screen. Then you've got the Marvel Superhero Academy. Um, that's where you break codes and learn the true meaning of superpowers. Then you've got the trading post from Frozen. Oh my God, that's even more amazing. <laughs> um, you around in a Frozen themed space and see all your Frozen fans. It's amazing. And they're all on different ships. So the yeah. Disney Dreams got Andy's Room, Disney Infinity Game Room, Pixie Hollow, Star Wars and Marvel. Fantasy has Andy's Room, Star Wars, Marvel, Pixie Hollow. And the Disney Magic has Andy's Room, Marvel, Disney Junior, Pixie Hollow. And Disney Wonder has Andy's Room, Marvel, Disney Junior, and Frozen Adventures. Oh, I, I, I just want to go in myself. I don't forget the yeah, kids. I want to go on. 
It's just so much across the ship, though, as well. So on, like, the Dream and the Fantasy, they have the enchanted artwork as well throughout the ship. And it's so... Magic is the only word I can use to describe it. But as you're walking around the ship, all the artwork kind of comes to life around you as well. So as you walk past um, different carriage style limits, they'll they'll have, like, a poster of Steamboat Willie. And as you walk past, then it'll kind of play the music and you'll see Mickey kind of steering the ship as well. There's a whole interactive game you can play across the ship as well called Midship Detective Agency. This is only on the Dream of the Fantasy, um, but basically you go to kind of the starting um, operations lab and you can play a Muppets version or you can play a Disney version of it. Um, from my memories, you've got to find the missing Dalmatians. The Dalmatians have been stolen and you've got to go around the ship to all these interactive pieces of art and solve the mystery of who's stolen um, the, the, the Dalmatians. What? can't remember what the Muppets one was, but that's the one we played. Um, but again, wow. you walk up to the artwork, you're given this magic um, like card, or it's an AR card, um, you hold it up to the screen and then Pepe the Prawn comes out and he's kind of talking to you about the mystery oh. of what's going on. And you've got to hunt down, <laughs> from my memory, you have to hunt down all the instruments or all the props so they can put on the Muppet show. Seems to be what I remember it. But a, a really oh. cool way to spend the day at sea exploring this ship and it's really good for kind of just letting you go off and have your own little adventure. Again, all ages. These aren't just activities for the kids. I was like a kid going around up to all the magic artwork. There's just oh, loads of really great. fun interactive elements across the ships as well that you can just play about with. It's, 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 it's cool. It's special. Yeah. So do they do um, planned, like, like at Disney, because we're all Disney mad, we know that. So do they do yeah. the planned character meet and greets mm-hmm. on board like they do at the parks? Yeah, definitely. So again, in your um, daily planner, I forgot what it's called, Navigator, sorry. In the Navigator, you get in your room each day, which I think they've now gone to a digital only version. It'll list all the character meet and greet times as well for you. So if you want to meet any of the characters, you just head up. They tend to be a lot more informal than they are in the park. You still have to line up, but you get more time with the characters because obviously they've got more time to spend with you. Um, but usually throughout the day as well, um, we've met Chip and Dale outside the theatre. So kind of when the theatre's finishing, they'll have Chip and Dale outside the auditorium waiting for you. Um, some characters do tend to free roam, but not as much just for safety of the characters. Um, they... Uh, yeah you can't just kind of randomly walk up to them. So if you're expecting kind of, you know, the characters just to be randomly walking around, that doesn't happen just to say that. But the characters are plentiful. Like you can go into the atrium um, at certain times and you will see five, six characters on different floors. They're all on different tiers of the of the atrium and you just kind of work your way around the different characters. But then they're also in the dinner shows as well. Like Mickey's in Animated Palette. On The Wish, they've got the Arendelle restaurant as well. So you'll meet kind of Olaf, um, Anna, Elsa, Kristoff, they'll just be kind of walking around the different tables. We did Rapunzel's on the magic and all the characters from Tangled, Rapunzel will come to the table and she'll have a conversation with you. Uh, Animator's Palette, actually, if you're on a longer than a four-night sailor and you end up in Animator's Palette twice, they do Crush the Turtle from um, Finding Nemo. Oh. So he will actually <laughs> swim past your table on all the screens and he'll actually have a conversation with your table as well. Oh. Uh, it's just loads of little things like that throughout the ship. Oh, really stop cool. it, stop it, because I just want to go on one. <laughs> I tell you what, this podcast is it's going to cost me an absolute fortune. I've got, to, I've got to put Virgin now. I've got to put Disney. I've obviously I've always wanted to go on this way. I'm like, oh, no. I'm sitting there thinking, right, when can I book in a holiday? <laughs> so adult-only spaces, we've talked a lot about the kids. And obviously, Disney, you associate with kids. But then being 50 and I've booked Disney for next year. Yeah. Um. What is there for adults? There is loads. I don't know as much about The Wish because I've not been on The Wish yet. I've done some research into it. But definitely on The Dream, Fancy, The Magic and the Wonder because they're all kind of similar to each other. They've got an adult-only district. So definitely on The Fancy, you've got seven adult-only lounges, uh, which is amazing. Just to have this entire wow. adult district. It's about a third of the forward of one of the decks on the ship. Um, so you've got like the Champagne Lounge. You've got um, the Irish Bar. You've got a little tiny boutique bar, which I never really went into because it was always quite quiet and dimly lit. But then you've got the main adult nightclub as well. So on the fantasy, it is, I think it's called the Tube, but it's themed like the London Underground. That's where all the adult entertainment is going to be. And again, it's Disney friendly, so you're not going to find anything too far out, too raunchy. Um, But that's where the adult games are going to be played. So adult karaoke, um, that's where they're going to play matchmates. So that whole, how well do you know your, your mates? They kind of get two couples on, on um, stage. Usually they, they're celebrating their honeymoon. So it's usually quite funny to see how well people on their honeymoon know each other. Um, but it's a lot of fun. So you've kind of got the entertainment coordinator who kind of specializes in the adult activity. So you get to know that person. They'll do all the trivia as well. So there's trivia for the whole family, but there's trivia for the adults only as well. Not that it's themed to be like more risque or anything. It's just it's for the adults only. So there's definitely entertainment that's, you know, just for adults. There's no kids in there. 
they do loads of stuff like loads of games activities coordinations there's um the other only pool areas as well so again on the dream of the fantasy there's a two-story area at the front of the ship and one of them's called satellite falls and the other one is quiet cove which are just other only full of sun loungers with their own pools their own splash pool cool down pool like like i say me and phil we did it for our honeymoon and we never saw kids other than the buffet we'd completely avoided them the entire sailing uh-huh. mainly because the kids are so well looked after as well they've got their own spaces uh-huh. and the adults have their own spaces so if you don't want to deal with kids you really don't have to wow it, honestly you've because I, I think what I saw was all the vacations, which was a lot of people with tiny kids yeah. having an amazing time. But yeah. obviously, we're past that, and yeah. that you've you've inspired me to do it now. What I will say is the two the two original ships are slightly smaller, so those adult only spaces are a lot smaller. Um, that's not right. to say you won't have a nice time; they're just a lot smaller. If you're adult only couple, my, my advice would be to look at maybe the Dream of the Fantasy, just because I, in my opinion. The Fantasy is my favourite ship I've ever sailed on as well, just because I think she does a great job of dividing everyone. So, you know, you've got the theatre, they've got an onboard theatre if you want to watch, like, new release Disney films. If you time it right and there's a premiere happening, literally the day they come out in cinemas, you could be watching the latest Disney film. We watched, like, Han Solo, the Han Solo film, and that came out on the ship the day it came out. Um, we watched Doctor Strange the day it came out as well. So you can watch the latest Disney releases as well Love in the auditorium on board. Um, you know, you've got, obviously, all the entertainment, the adult only spaces that, Europa, I think it's called on the fantasy, the adult district. That's and you cannot underestimate how big. Oh, Skyline! I haven't even talked about Skyline. Skyline is my favorite cocktail bar I've ever been in anywhere. It's in um, the adult only district on the fantasy, but it's completely surrounded by video screens. And it's just sat down. It's really small. There's like maybe thirty people can fit in it. But as you're dining there, drinking your cocktails, type of thing, the whole room transitions to different skylines around Europe. So one minute you could be in Paris oh. with all the um, Eiffel Tower twinkling and the lights going off, and the next minute it changes and you could be then be in, say, like Budapest or somewhere like that. Um, but then they have a um, cocktail passport, so you can have seven cocktails. For, I think we pay like sixty dollars for this cocktail passport, but there's seven different martinis themed to the different skylines you can see in the background. But what's even more magic, and this is the Disney difference. They hide Disney characters in the windows of all the different buildings as well. Um, so no. you can be sat there just drinking your cocktail and you can see things like R2-D2 just go past the windows in someone's house type of thing. And then Mickey will... It's only reflections, like the shadow of someone. But there's loads of little details. So as you're getting drunk, you're a drunker. You're having that whole like, did I just see Mickey Mouse in that window? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I love it. It's Donna, my favorite We need lounge. to do it. We need to do it. Yeah. You have to book it. Christmas, we'll, Christmas. Christmas. we'll do it for our Christmas do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So is there a drink? There's no drinks package, is there, on Disney? Not in the traditional sense. So if you're somebody who's looking to get drunk in the traditional, I've paid however much per day and I've got unlimited drinks, then no, Disney don't have a drinks package. It's very easy to get drunk. Um, so like I say, in certain lounges, they will have a flight of drinks, you could call it. So you'll pay for, like in the case of Skyline, you could pay, last time I was on, it was around $60, 70 and you get seven drinks in that passport. Um, so you just show the passport, they stamp it to say, great, another drink, and you just have the, however many. So you're making a saving of like one or two drinks. Uh, in the main dining room, you can have wine pairing, and you can buy, when I was on board, it was a three, five, and seven bottle. So you pay up front for three, five, or seven right. wine bottles, and then they bring that wine to you then each night. So you can kind of drink it throughout the duration of your your cruise. And again, you save it on about maybe one or two bottles, depends on how many you buy in that package. Uh, they will cork it through the end of the night. You don't have to drink it all that night when you've opened it, and they will bring the bottle to you the next day. So could I just ask you about the cocktail passport? Because I couldn't mm-hmm. drink seven cocktails in one day. No, no, no. This is so... for the duration of cruise as well. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so you haven't got to get drunk. You can just yeah. drink it slow. It's yeah, only in right. that one lounge, so you have to go back to Skyline. So again, and they're all martinis, so it's very themed, if you go. I mean, it's a... Oh, it's... yeah is a float type thing they also do cocktail of the day as well so each day they'll have an alcoholic and non-alcoholic cocktail that is reduced for the day so usually it's about eight to nine dollars rather than the fourteen dollars type of thing um so right. some people i know will just drink just the cocktail of the day and get, get very drunk off that one cocktail so where where can you go on a disney ship where do they sell right now so now they've got more ships as well. They're now actually expanding and going to new regions. But typically the best place to get a Disney cruise is going to be the Caribbean. They sail out of Port Canaveral, obviously because of how close it is to Walt Disney World. If you somebody wants to do a land and sea package, so maybe visit Walt Disney World for seven nights and then do a seven-night Caribbean sailing, then that's going to be your best port call. They've got year-round sailing from the Caribbean. Um, then what they tend to do is they send one of the ships over to Europe for the summer months. So this year we've got the Disney Dream and we're waiting to see which ship they're going to send in 2024 over to Europe. 
Uh, but you'll find a whole range of sailings, Norwegian fjords, British Isles. They've introduced a couple of short sailings from the UK to part of them, Southampton. Um, Barcelona sailings as well, Greek Isles. It's a real mishmash of different sailings, but great if you want to sail in Europe with Disney. Um, then this year, and for the first time ever, they're sending one of the ships to Australia for winter as well. Um, and you can also sail with them in Alaska as well, um, which is a great opportunity if you want to do Alaska, but get that amazing Disney storytelling in Alaska, you can get that as well. Um, we don't know yet where the treasure is going to be sailing. I have theories and, sus and suspicions, but we don't know for sure. Um, but definitely if you want to sail in the Caribbean, Europe in the summer, Australia in the winter, and Alaska in the summer months as well. And then who knows where ship, um, like the Disney treasure and ship seven, we don't know where she's going to be sailing, but I think we're going to see more destinations open up as well when they come online. I'll tell you what we've not covered, um, your cabin. What what cabin did you have? What did you think of it? I think so that's an interesting point as well, because we've sailed in three different cabins actually, so got moved on our one. So our first ever honeymoon sailing, we stayed in a family deluxe um, veranda. So Disney call all their balconies verandas. And the unique thing about Disney is they have kind of standard verandas and they have family verandas as well. And what's cool is the family verandas have split bathrooms. Um, so you've got a shower unit as well as then a separate toilet unit as well. So you can actually, two people can get ready at the same time. So it's great for those with families as well. If you're trying to kind of get everyone ready together, you've kind of got a bit more space to get ready. I think they're one of the few cruise lines I'm aware of that have that split bathroom um, feature on them. But again, that is an extra category within the veranda category. So... We stayed in a veranda for our honeymoon. Beautiful room. Loads of space. Like, I think it's probably one of the more generous cabins, again, because it's designed for families. So you've got kind of the pull-down bed if you want to have the, the two different beds. Beautiful beds. They've got on-demand TV as well. So all the Disney movies, you can watch them on-demand in your kind of cabin if you wanted to. Um, really, really lovely room to go into. And then for our transatlantic, we originally sat up on the, the lowest category inside cabin, which, in my opinion, was too small, and I felt a bit claustrophobic in it. But we then upgraded to an ocean view. So it's a standard, the same layout as kind of a standard balcony cabin, but without the balcony. And they handed it all tall to look out in the world. And I love that room. It's really great because you're quite low to the water and you still get a really big open light into the room to kind of sit into it. And that's the one you were talking about previously on another episode where you can kind of sit into the cushioned area yeah. of the window. Um, so it's just really lovely if you kind of want to see outside, but you don't want to pay the premium for a balcony cabin to get that ocean view as well. Amazing. They also then, following on from that, they have then like concierge class, which is their suite class level. Right. Um, but that's where you get butler, you get access to suite lounges and things like that. But that's a whole other category again then. So um, I understand that they do theme sailings, obviously at Christmas and Halloween and that. Can you tell me a bit about those? Yeah, it's a really cool thing. So our first ever sailing was actually a, a merry time at sea, I think they call it. So one of their Christmas sailings. Um, and I know all cruise ships decorate for Christmas and they have maybe play a bit of Christmas music, but <laughs> Disney got all out. <laughs> like... It's crazy. They have whole shows dedicated to Christmas. Um, so they have like uh, the Christmas ball inside. Our, I think it was the last night of our sailing. So they have all the carriages coming out dressed up in Christmas attire, Mickey as Santa, uh, Minnie as Mrs. Claus. And they kind of just take over the whole area and they have special shows for it. Um, obviously, there's loads of activities themed around it. I've not been on Halloween, but I so want to do a Halloween sailing because they have like yeah. this tradition of the Halloween tree in the, in the atrium. And each night of your sail and the Halloween tree grows, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and more pumpkins appear on it. And again, you've got all the kind of Halloween sun theming on board. Then they just started introducing kind of at sea events, which are themed cruises now as well. So now that Disney own pretty much everything, um, you can get kind of your Pixar day at sea. You've got Marvel day at sea and you've got Star Wars day at sea as well. So these are whole sailings whereby then the whole sailing is themed by these different kind of Disney franchises. Um, I've seen pictures of the Marvel Day at Sea, and they're so adorable because, like, Mickey will come out oh. dressed up as Loki. Uh, and none, I can't remember if he's like, oh, no, Mickey comes out as Captain America, sorry. And then, like, all the, so all the Disney characters come dressed as their favorite Marvel superheroes, uh -huh. as well as you're then able to meet, obviously, then all your favorite Marvel characters throughout the ship as well. And then there's loads of entertainment and theming as well around kind of all the different characters. So they're limited. So, obviously, Halloween is going to be, I think it's, like, mid-September off the top of my head through to October and then from roughly Thanksgiving-ish period until the end of December you're going to have the merry time at sea and then I can't remember what time of year but then you've got the Pixar, Marvel and Star Wars scenes that happen at different times throughout the year as well. I might try all those. Well, <laughs> I'm such a Marvel geek. I just would be my enemy. Yeah. I just really would. I'd love it. I mean, Disney and Marvel on the same ship is like... <laughs> yeah. So you don't, and you're not necessarily guaranteed to see Marvel characters. This is how they do it as well. So like, you're not guaranteed to see Marvel characters on the ship outside of the kids' clubs on a normal sailing. So that's why the Marvel at Sea um, sailors are special because there's characters everywhere, and the whole ship gets themed and taken over by it. 
But I think it's worth saying about um, the themed parties on board as well. So Disney do have themed parties on the evenings on board. So the two I've experienced is Pirate Night. And Pirate Night happens in the Caribbean definitely every sailing. And <laughs> <laughs> my first ever one was my, and my, I can't remember how old I was, but it was my birthday. And I was so chuffed to honeymoon. And I was like, great, Pirate Night's going to be my birthday. It's going to be amazing. And we did um, rum making as a class. You do drinks classes on board. So we did like- rum class. <laughs> but we did a private class and nobody turned up apart from four of us. So it's a class of 20 people and only four people turned up. But she made the, the example cocktails for everyone. <laughs> and she was like, well, they're going to go to waste. You might as well drink them. When oh. I say I was drunk, at least in this cocktail class, I'm not underestimated. So we had speciality dining as well that evening in Paolo. And the maitre d' blessed him. I think he was taking the myth out of me, but um, he saw the state that I was in and he turned around to me and was like, First, would you like me to cut your lamb chops for you? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> well, probably for the best, yes. And then he brought up yeah. the souffle and he asked if I wanted him to cut my souffle. And I was like, you're just taking the mickey now. But yeah. <laughs> so we then went back to our room to get changed because Paolo's is a dress code. So we went back to get changed in our cabin. And I said to Phil, my husband, I was like, I just got to have a little nap. Just a little nap. Just a little one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to me rolling oh. over the next morning. Going to Did I miss Pirate Night? And he just called out his phone, <laughs> showing me all the pictures of Pirate Night. And I was like, oh. So, yeah, I did get a little bit too drunk uh, on a Disney ship and miss Pirate Night. But Pirate Night's this awesome deck party, has fireworks at sea. Disney were the first cruise line to introduce fireworks at sea. Uh, Mickey comes out any kind of um, parasails or glides, uh, also with zip lines across the top of the pool deck. It's just this really cool deck party. The other one they do as well is Frozen at Sea as well. So Freeze, I think it's Freeze the Night. Um, but again, so all the characters are frozen. They come out onto the pool, onto the main pool deck in the evening and they kind of let off snow. So you've got snow happening on the pool deck as well. Singing, obviously, Let It Go at the top of the voice when you're maybe drinking a drink or two on the pool deck. So again, there's loads of themed entertainment on board, theme nights on board as well. And then they throughout the day, they have activities as well around that. They have menus, the menus theme. So you have frozen menu in all the restaurants on frozen night. Um, there's like a treasure trail you can do during the daytime, which if you complete, you get frozen chocolates. Then they put like little treats in your room as well. So we have like a light tub snowflake necklace to wear on frozen night as well. So there's like loads of things throughout the whole day then on these theme nights as well. Sounds incredible. Sounds fantastic. So is there anything we've missed? Is there anything you think you need to tell us? Um, well, I say one unique thing unique thing about Disney is that like all cruise lines now, they have their own Caribbean islands as well. So uh, with Disney, you've got the moment Castaway Key, which every sailor from the Caribbean usually includes a stop off at Castaway Key. And it's a really cool resort. It's the, it is a genuine island that they've kind of purchased um, and they've transformed it into a little Disney safe haven. I loved Castaway Key. It was great. But they've also now got a second resort coming as well called Lighthouse Point. Don't know much more about that yet at the moment. They're still currently constructing it, but it's going to be a slightly more eco-friendly version of it. So rather than dredging up the ocean, they've kind of built a floating pontoon for the ship to get to. Um, a lot of the pathways are kind of elevated above the ground, so they haven't had to dig up all the ground to kind of disturb the nature of the wildlife. So I think they're doing a really good job now for their second islands, at least anyway, to be a lot more eco-friendly and be aware of the local environment surrounding. So that should hopefully get announced hopefully soon about where which ship you can get to get to light out points as well. So I think that's worth considering. You're a bit of a unique safe haven, I guess, a safe Disney-friendly island as well, where it's all kind of the kids' clubs are on land as well. You've got special kids-only pools as well, so the kids have their own kind of um, beach resort area as well. So really, really cool for the whole family as well. And they have an adult-only area as well. If you are an adult, you want to get away from the kids, they have their own adult-only beach as well on their private island. I love that they do that. I love that they cater. Not that I have any objections to kids because, you know, when people have always been really good when our kids are, grew, grew up, but you want to see them having a good time, but then it's nice just to be able to slope off and have a bit of a yeah. quiet time as well. Yeah. Yeah. I love That's that. what surprised me. As I had no, I was not bothered about kids knowing like I go to Disney World quite a lot. So being around kids doesn't bother me on holiday. But I was quite surprised myself. And the reason why we fell in love with Disney as much as we did is just how well they cater to the adult entertainment as well. There's so many drinks classes on board. There's so many adult-only activities on board. Um, you know, there's so much available to adults that you don't feel like you're just going on a kid's holiday for seven days. The adults have just as much to do on board a Disney ship. And I think that's the biggest misconception people have. People think it's just nothing but kid stuff all day. And it is, but there's tons for adults as well. Sounds brilliant. 
Cool. So I think that's a really good overview as a starting point for kind of why Disney is a really unique cruise line in the cruise industry. Um, hopefully, we'll get to sail with them one day in the future as well, because that'll be cool to get us on our Disney cruise again. But if you guys are interested in booking a Disney cruise, I would love to help you set sail with Disney. Um, you can find me online at magical-traveler.com or I'm on all social media as Magical T R V L R. And I know you guys, as always, have a ton of content on your website about different cruise lines and Disney as well. So where can the guys find that if they're looking for it? So they can find lots more information on Disney cruise ships um, over at Cruising with Kids or if you're typing Cruising for All, comes up at the site as well. And I, I write lightlovedo.com and Sarah is over at Extraordinary Chaos, which I have got a lot of Disney crafts on, actually. You do? Yeah. I've seen some of them. They're great. They're all, they're all personal use only, but I'm a bit obsessed with Mickey. We've actually got some... Um, print your own Cricut Disney crafts on the website. So if you did want to do some little magnetic um, cutouts for your door when you go to Disney, you can you can find them there. That's down there, the printer wants to make metallic uh, magnetic paper. So they'll be on the website too. I'd say it's really popular actually as well, decorating your door. We used to, on our Transatlantic, yeah. we had door of the day. <laughs> so every day on the cruise director TV, they would go around and feature one of the cabin doors each day that, that went above and beyond. Some of these doors were incredible. Like one had a giant woven Rapunzel here that kind of went wow. around the whole door frame with lights in it and all different portraits of the characters. Like that in itself is an activity on board Disney. He's just gone around to see other people's cabin doors and how they've decorated them. I love that. I love it. Little random segue at the end of the episode. <laughs> <for you. laughs> but guys, if you've enjoyed this episode, please do give us a like and a follow. It definitely helps the, the algorithm know that we're out there. Do please leave us a review on iTunes if you are listening to us on iTunes. And if not, we will see you on the next episode. All the best. Bye. Bye.